What up, I'm Dregs1 and this is the history of the Bay, Woody. I've always had a lot of respect for Woody's music as an independent artist, as someone who did his own thing and really had his own hustle and really put his city on. So I wanna get into the details of this video. I did a short clip on TikTok and Instagram about Woody. I made a couple errors in the video, just things I misstated. I definitely wanna set the record straight. I realized that there's a lot of sensitive issues when you talk about Woody and his history and the history of some of the people around him. So I wanna be very mindful of that. If anybody has any issue or if I get anything wrong and they wanna chop it up with me and help me get it straightened out, just hit me up, it's all love. I'm only gonna to try to talk about things that have already been spoken about publicly. This is not something that I'm hella close to personally. This is just stuff that I've gathered from the outside looking in stuff that I've researched and stuff that I've heard other people speak on. But I'm very careful about my sources. I'm very careful about what I put out there. And I just want everybody to know that this video is coming from a place of respect and tribute. And I think Woody is dope. He doesn't get enough credit. And I want to see him get his shine on and continue to make waves in hip hop. So with that being said, let's get into some of this story. People tend to kind of box Woody in to this lane of a gangster Norteño rapper. Sometimes people would look at me kind of sideways like, what are you listening to? Because it's different than typical Bay Area rap in that sense. And not only that, you know, he's a white Norteño, which is kind of unheard of. If you're outside of the Bay, you might not get that. Out here in the Bay, that's not the craziest thing you'll ever hear. But for me personally, I always have respect for his production. I have respect for his hustle. I have respect for his rhymes. I have respect for his subject matter. And I had a lot of respect for how he was putting other people on. And actually, I would say he was an influence in my production because you could tell he might not have been the most musically trained person, but he was making it work with a lot of his dope keyboard beats and, and flipping d different samples and stuff like that. So for me, I've always been a fan. I've always kind of held him in high regard in terms of Bay Area hip hop. So getting into Woody's background, he's actually from Antioch, which is in the 925 Contra Costa County. I've heard some people debate this on the internet whether Antioch is actually the Bay and dude, it's the Bay Area. Contra Costa County, that's part of the Bay, even though it's a little farther out there in the east, the 925, I still consider that Bay Area. And uh, Woody grew up around the West 20th Street neighborhood and from stuff that he's spoken on and other people have spoken on, he fell into the gang life pretty early. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of politics involved around gang culture in the California, where you have the uh, Norteños are predominant out here in certain Latin communities. Obviously, I'm not the most qualified expert to speak on that. That's not the world that I come from. I definitely grew up around Norteños in San Francisco and um, saw what was going on with some of their beefs and stuff like that. And that's not some that we're gonna get into in this video. But that was the world that Woody entered into. That was the type of neighborhood he grew up in. It goes without saying that kind of lifestyle comes with trials and tribulations. Something that Woody spoke on heavily in his music are the struggles of some of his friends. And that would include Snoop, who was arrested for a quadruple homicide at the age of 17. And he was actually tried as an adult. What happened there, again, I don't want to spill any unnecessary details. I'm only going to speak on what's already been put out there in the public. But there was a drive-by, a gang-related drive-by that happened in Pittsburgh. And two gunmen later that night entered a quinceanera in Antioch and started firing. Snoop was picked up for this homicide, tried as an adult, and convicted, sentenced to life in state prison. But to this day, himself, Woody, all of his friends have denied that Snoop was actually part of it, said that he's not guilty and maintained his innocence. And I will say again, I don't know the facts of this, but this type of stuff happens all the time where police will just try to clear the homicide, pin it on whoever they can, or maybe they already have their target on a certain individual and it makes sense to them to try to get them to go down for some, even if they didn't do it. Snoop recently had a parole hearing in 2020 and was denied parole, so he's still fighting from inside uh, state prison. His friends are still showing him love, showing him some support, and I'm wishing him the best because no matter what, it's not easy being locked down, being tried 
at 17 years old and convicted to life that's crazy being in prison since you're 18 years old that's rough for anybody no matter what the circumstances are and obviously this is something that had a profound effect on Woody and he was always represented for Snoop and always trying to maintain his innocence another sad incident that happened around Woody's life is what happened to his friend Blackbird who was a suspect in multiple homicides as well as the quadruple homicide that Snoop was convicted for police suspected him of being the second gunman again this is something that he maintained his innocence on at a certain point he went on the run but in 1998 police caught up with him and cornered him in a home in Antioch and there was a two-day standoff where Blackbird was basically holed up in this house with his two daughters and the police claim that Blackbird shot himself as well as the daughters however again his friends are maintaining that this is not the truth because actually the coroner's report found three gunshot wounds to Blackbird's head one of those gunshot wounds was actually a gray so if you're trying to kill yourself it shouldn't take more than one shot that's kind of crazy I'm trying to speak on this as respectful as I can I'm not trying to say I know the truth or I know the details and I understand that for everybody involved this is very sensitive and I'm trying to speak on this in the most respectful way but I do think it's important because Woody himself has talked about what's going on with his friends Snoop and Blackbird and all of his music he's always represented for them since he was trying to keep their memories and their stories alive in his music I want to keep the same energy in this video but again I'm open to hearing from anybody who's close to the situation loved ones friends family members if there's something that I'm getting wrong or something that you feel shouldn't be spoken on just holla at me it's all love this theme of authorities interfering in people's lives and all this drama around the police and and death and violence was a big theme in Woody's music it seemed like these issues really pushed him to find something better to get involved in in his life so Woody started his own record label East Coco Records as I said earlier Antioch is in Contra Costa County so that's where the name comes from and this is something I really respect about Woody because he took the game seriously the Bay Area is the home of independent hustle there's so many different independent record labels out here that have done major things and I believe that East Coco is one of them and you could tell he took the game seriously in terms of figuring out not only how to make the music, how to make his own beats, how to mix his own songs, in terms of getting distribution and hustling and selling tapes independently and all these types of things, promotion, etc. Woody seemed like he had that figured out. And in 1998, he dropped the EP Yak Influence. And again, he produced the whole project and he mixed it as well, which is really impressive. I think the beats on there are banging. I think Woody definitely had his own style that's dope. Featured on the album were his partners Lil Los and Shadow. Shadow is also a member of the Straight Lace Mob crew that Juice was rocking with in the 90s. And I think it was important that Woody put his friends on. If he was going to make it, then so were they. The hit Norte Siding, which got some radio play around the bay as well as the song streets are calling me that's a really powerful song his style is really unique it's a lot of rapid flow type of delivery it's a lot of lyricism it's a lot of wordplay he touches on you know typical gangster rap themes but then he also gets a little deeper into the reality of the streets and how these things were taking a toll on him and honestly how they weren't cool and how it seemed like from what I was hearing in his raps he really did want to find something better for him and his friends throughout the years you'll also hear Woody touch on political subjects about the powers that be about police corruption about divide and conquering going on in society and even though he was definitely banging on wax and definitely calling out enemies and all that type of stuff there was a bit of a balance to his music that I find really interesting Yak Influence came out independently but it, it did so well that he secured himself a distribution deal with Koch Records and that was a nationwide distributor and that started taking his music even further. So in 1999 he dropped a project that he's probably most well known for which is the Northern Exposure Compilation. I've spoken on this in other areas about how important the compilation game was to the Bay Area where instead of one rapper, one artist putting himself on, you collect songs by different artists 
put them together on one release, everybody kind of comes together around that and gives it a push. I think that's exactly what happened with Northern Exposure. You know, Northern California, the Norteño movement is, is strong up here. And I think there's been other Norteño artists before Woody, such as Dark Room Familia, but I think Northern Exposure really represented for those folks in a way that hadn't been done before and it really took it on a major scale in terms of uniting people from all over. That project was executive produced by D. Small and produced entirely by Woody. And again, he's putting in a lot of work. And that album had artists from Antioch, San Francisco, Richmond, all over Northern California, featured Shadow and Lil Los again, as well as Young AZ and High Yellow Black, Louie Lou, Creep, Young Moan, B-Dog, Mac Maney. So these are up and coming artists at the time that are getting a shot to be on a project by Woody who already had a proven track record. And this album is a banger, I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, I ain't no Norteño. I'm not affiliated with that, but I enjoy this music. The production is dope, the raps are dope. I appreciate it hearing different style, different slice of life than what was going on with me where I lived in San Francisco. This first Northern Exposure really made some waves. To this day, it's still a very popular album. It still sells really well, and it laid the foundation for Woody to drop another uh, Northern Exposure project, Northern Exposure 2 in 2001, which also featured Exo Creep, the Jacka, rest in peace, and Hollow Tip and Young Droop. So he was branching out and were not just Latin or Norteño rappers, but Northern California Bay Area rappers in general. In 2001, he dropped the solo album, Demons In My Sleep. In 2002, he dropped Life Stories Volume 1, which collected some of those tracks that were on Northern Exposure and some of his past solo projects. And also in 2002, he dropped Northern Exposure Volume 4. I noticed that he, <laughs> there is no Northern Exposure Volume 3. I'll let you figure out why. But Northern Exposure 4 also featured AWAX out of Pittsburgh. And that's somebody that Woody would be very close with over the years. Mr. Key from San Francisco is also on there, as well as uh, Big Oso Loke and Mac and AK, as well as some of the other artists that had previously appeared on the other compilations. 2003, Northern Exposure 5, which introduced Big Tone from Antioch, also someone who was really closely affiliated with Woody. Mousy is on that project as well, as well as Lil D from Antioch. In 2005, Northern Exposure 6 would also be released featuring a lot of some of the same collaborators. 2006, the final Northern Exposure project. So you can see that's a lot of work. Woody is just constantly dropping. He's got this deal with Koch Records that's going well with the distribution where he's putting these albums out, solo albums, compilations, and he's selling and he's making moves. And again, I think he really has to be respected. I also want to shout out there in 2005, he did a collaboration album with AWAX called Two Sides of the Game. And he also appears on the compilation Pistoleros along with Never and Lil Koner as well. That's an impressive resume and that's one of the reasons I respect Woody so much is that he was a real rap cat and he really knew how to get it. He really had his business together. He was really serious about putting on for Antioch. And I should also say Antioch is a town that wasn't really represented before. If you're not from the Bay Area, you might not be too familiar with it. Since then, there's been a few other artists that have come out of Antioch, like Mike Sherm and Simba. But in Woody's time, I mean, it was a town that everyone was sleeping on. So I respect that he was putting that city on the map. By 2007, Woody had moved to Florence, Oregon. I kind of get the sense that maybe by the time that things were blowing up and he was getting all this attention and still dealing with gang politics and stuff like that in his hometown, relocating seemed like a good move at the time. And sadly in 2007, that's where he ended up passing away. And again, I spoke on this previously in my shorter clip that I used on social media. I want to correct what I said. It's a sensitive subject. It's something that I want to speak on with respect. I'm not the type to make YouTube videos where I try to profit off somebody's death or some controversy or anything like that, but I do want to get the story out there as properly as I can break it down. The officials had reported that Woody took his own life, I believe, and this was a rumor that started circulating on the internet immediately. And obviously, as we've touched on, 
what he went through a lot of different things in his life. Actually, suicide is a theme that he talked about in many of his songs. However, there's no official cause of death listed in the records of Florence, Oregon. So the county records have nothing saying that it was officially a suicide. It's rumored that he wasn't too popular up there with the authorities. They weren't happy about having a gangster rapper, a well-known gang figure moving into their area. The story is not clear and it's not my space to speculate on it. We can kind of connect the dots here if the authorities are saying he killed himself, but that's not officially on record. Obviously, there's something that's not being said. Either way, it's a tragedy that he's gone. I have much sympathy for his friends and family and loved ones. Woody was buried in Antioch, which was one of his wishes that he expressed in his music. In 2016, his friends organized to put up a beautiful headstone at his gravesite, but two years later, that headstone mysteriously disappeared. Reasons there are not entirely clear. Again, there's just a lot of mystery and controversy surrounding Woody's life, and it's not my place to go and try to solve these mysteries on this platform, but I do want to speak about what happened. So since Woody passed away, I would say that his friends and associates have done a very good job of keeping his name alive. Big Tone has gone on to be very successful starting his own record label called Sav It Out. And he credits Woody with really putting him on, giving him a start, allowing him to be on the Northern Exposure compilations, giving him a lot of game about how to be successful in music, how to separate yourself from the street world and transition into the business world of the music industry and i gotta give a lot of props to big tone i think he's been very successful as a solo artist and as a record label owner and also awax was a frequent collaborator of woody dropping their album together also being on the northern exposure projects awax is from pittsburgh which is pretty much right next to antioch it's also contra costa county and I think he's done a really good job of keeping Woody's name alive, especially recently. In 2022, he dropped an album called Woody World and uh, Woody World Volume 2, where he flipped some of the old Woody songs and, and redid them and paid tribute to his friend and spoke a lot about East Coco legacy, collaborating with some of the other artists who were on Northern Exposure. And actually, just recently, he dropped two volumes of a compilation series called Northern Rexposure, put out by his own label, Pyrex. And that features some of the original East Coco roster, as well as newer up-and-coming cats. And I think it's really dope. And I believe they're also working on a documentary about Woody. I give him a lot of props. I know it's not easy because, again, this is all such sensitive stuff. His life was controversial, his death is controversial, there's all this mystery, there's still people grieving about his loss and, you know, before we get into anything, music or his life or anything, that's the most important thing to keep in mind is that this was a man who had family, he had friends who loved him, you know, that's who was most important here. Like I said, I always respected him. I thought he was super dope as an artist, producer, rapper. I love the way that he hustled. I love the way that he put on for his own people, for his own city. So I think it's important that we keep his story going and hopefully more people will tell his story and discover his music throughout the years and more people will be inspired by some of the positive things that he put out in his music and some of the positive things that he did in his life. What can I say? This is another story, epic part of the history of the Bay. Rest in peace, Woody.